No, there is many factors uh, uh, involved in that. The main one is what kind of cancer and uh, what's the stage of cancer. Uh, the second component, usually any cancer, what's the first step we do after we establish the diagnosis, we establish what is the stage of the patient. And after that, we'll present it to the MDT, the multidisciplinary uh, tumor board. And uh, it's a consensus of the team. In many cancer, there will be uh, the treatment is uh, between chemo, uh, or systemic treatments, radiotherapy, and surgery. And depend on the need and the stage of the patient, we uh, change our strategy accordingly. For example, some cases we go for chemo radiation up front to shrink down the tumor preparing to surgery. And some, 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 some cases we do only uh, radiations without chemo and surgery. So it is the discussions of the team and it is the multidisciplinary approach uh, discussion. This is a very uh, interesting question. So usually, um, a new adjuvant approach, um, um, we use it with the mainly bulky disease or locally advanced disease that we try to shrink it uh, down and in preparation for surgery. Uh, we call it the downsizing of the tumor, and that it will uh, increase the chance for um, and a completion, complete surgery uh, with a clear margin. And, everything. and uh, that you can see in some GI or gastrointestinal uh, disease like rectal cancer, or GI cancer. Uh, sometimes you use it uh, in uh, pancreatic cancer. So in those scenarios, sarcoma also sometimes, yeah. Proton therapy is different than uh, uh, IMRT, which is the intensity modulated radiotherapy or stereotactic, which is still most of the time delivered by um, an alenac phase. Uh, these spots are a photon phase. In terms of the proton, uh, it, it have a very a unique uh, characteristic, which is uh, uh, they can deliver a high dose of radiations um, in a very small area, avoiding the exit dose, and also have a very small entrance dose. What that means, that means when you, when you use a photon to treat a uh, tumor, uh, usually the case, a deep-seated tumor, usually the dose of radiation will be dropped down in the back until it will reach to the deep-seated tumor. And what that means, that means that the normal tissue will be exposed also to radiation. Also, after hitting the tumor, the radiation will not stop, it will keep going. And that's what we call the exit dose, which it will hit the normal tissues on the exit dose. Proton is different. Proton have almost nil uh, uh, drop-off dose uh, prior to the tumor. They have something called BRACB, which is an, a spike of uh, dose of radiation that drop. And then you have almost zero uh, exit dose. So the, 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 the side effect or the, the exposure to the normal structure surrounding that area is very limited. On the other hand, uh, Proton is very successful in terms of treating an deep-seated tumor in a very critical area like a head and neck or like a brain, and we use it more in kids. But it's still the studies and the data is not mature yet in other uh, area like GI, like uh, lung, like others. There is some studies there now and some centers that are now using it for other area, but it's still not mature yet. That is uh, my speciality, actually. That's my subspeciality in the radiation ecology. So uh, gamma knife, cyber knife, LENAC phase, uh, treatments, uh, what else? Any knife we can use. So all of those, they will deliver the same type of radiation. It's called stereotactic uh, radiotherapy, which is delivering very high dose of radiation in a very small area. The technology that you use is different from uh, uh, machine to machine. In the gamma knife, we use the source of the radiation as a cobalt. Uh, source is more than 160 cobalt, small cobalt source. And it's very precise and it's only used for tumor or cancer that within, let's say tumor, because they use it even for benign uh, disease uh, within the brain, within the skull. The cyber knife is a uh, dynamic robotic arm, the gantry, which is the source of radiation uh, attached to it. And that that the, the, the robotic arm will move around the patient in different uh, direction. So it will give us a different axis to treat the tumor. But it is a photon phase uh, treatment. In the LENAC5, it's the photon phase, but it's uh, like a circle 
uh, kind of an arrangement um, with uh, two double axes or maybe more three double axes. We call it arc, arc of treatments. So the bottom line is all of them, they can deliver a very high dose of radiation. The study showed there is no difference what technology you use or what machine you use. The outcome is the same, but depend on the preference of the, uh, of the uh, physicians and depend on the availability of the disease. Of the, of the machine. You know, uh, there is uh, many uh, revolutions happen in the radiation oncology prior. And I think we need to uh, emphasize on it and uh, invest in it. For example, uh, the main thing is using the images to guide us in the treatment, including an X-ray or a CT scan, or with an MRI recently by calling, by using the image guided radiotherapy, which is mainly make us uh, be more focused, uh, see where we treating, uh, uh, have a smaller volume so we will have less side effect. We can tolerate, patient can tolerate the treatment and we can escalate the dose. The second uh, technology which is using the, the, the IMRT or the rabbit arc is depend on the machine you use. Uh, this, is, uh, this is very unique as an intense modality modulated uh, radiotherapy. Uh, radiotherapy started with 2D treatment, is that using only two beams. I remember in Canada when I was trained, they show us how even you draw your field. Then you go for 3D. Then you go for IMRT. It's exactly like going from 3D to 5 or 7D because it's using a small beamlet radiotherapy that is can be uh, decrease the doses to the surrounding structure and be more focused and safe to treat a deep, deeper seated tumor. And if you talk about what's the, what's coming, what's coming is mainly is emphasizing in those structure in those uh, modalities, having the treatment faster, having the treatment more convenient, having more um, identification and uh, AI involvement in the treatment planning, and also involving in the uh, uh, in, in in the treatment itself. Um, having more technology in terms of the size of the machine. For example, before we never hear or see a donut-like machine, the tomotherapy is the one before, but as a lean activist, we usually see in a four-arm machine that looks like a transformer movies, uh, having four, four arms that swing around the patient. But now it's different. Now we use a donut-like machine with the new technology that's coming out, and that's make it more convenient to installate the new machine. Having faster treatment, before we say for a simple treatment, we need at least 20 to 30 minutes. Now we're talking about five minutes or less. So this is where we're going with this. Treatment of cancer is a teamwork. So the MDT would decide the best way of treating this cancer according to the guideline, according to all the study we have, is to use what we call, for example, radio sensitizer Radi uh, chemotherapy, which is a chemotherapy that we can use to make those cancer more sensitive to radiation, so we have better result. And that is what what's going side to side. Now, what's coming, uh, and it did already came, but what it did already come, but what more use the immune therapies. We're using uh, the the the, the obscopal effect, which is mainly exposing the antigen of the, of the cancer. To the immune system and then have the patient fighting that cancer by the immunity that he have. So having the precise or the targeted treatment, it's go parallel head to head with the radiations and the effect of radiation. It can enhance the effect of radiation, which it will enhance the, 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 the survival and the success rate of treating cancer. Uh, if we compare stereotactic radiotherapy to brachytherapy, Usually, the principle of radi radiation therapy or radiation oncology is to deliver high dose to the cancer with minimum side effect and minimum dose to the surrounding normal structures. The only way you can do that is by putting the source of the radiation inside the cancer. And that's only possible by the brachytherapy. So brachytherapy is the only modality of radiations that deliver the, the high dose of radiation to the tumor and minimum side effect to the surrounding structure. Now with the new technology, with the SRS and SPRT, we can do that or we can at least come close to that 
by using multiple beams, smaller area, significant immobilization device, we can deliver a high dose radiotherapy to a very smaller area and uh, with minimum side effects. So they can go side to side, but still the principle of brachytherapy uh, it's used in many scenarios like uh, gynecological cancer, prostate cancer, head and neck cancer sometimes, uh, skin cancer and others. Palliative care is different. Palliative care and end of life is different. When I was in, uh, trained in Canada and US, I need to set out for classes to how you deliver a bad news. So your facial expression, how you sit in front of the patient and the family, you need to face them. You cannot sit like me now behind my desk. I need to sit in front of you on the one. I need to deliver the news in the way that you need to give something called warning shot. For example, let's say I have a today a patient, young patient, she have a CT scan and the CT scan show that there is some a new spot. So you cannot say, well, unfortunately you have a new spot. She will crash and you will lose her and she will have a blackout and she will not listen to you. Even though she, she looks like she listens to you. What you do is say, well, I have a good news and a news or good news and some other news. As a human being, as a cancer survivor, she will click right away. She will not listen to the good news. She will wait for the other news. By the time you deliver the good news, sometimes the good news, we don't try it. Sometimes I will do this. Uh, there is nothing in the liver. There is nothing in the spleen. There is nothing in the abdomen. So those are kind of uh, <coughs> what you say, and, 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 and uh, giving the patient time to be ready for the next step. By the time I reach to the what's the news, she already in her mind circle, this is bad. This most likely is spreading everywhere. Then I will say, no, it's just one spot. And this is one, she will be more open and she will communicate with you and she will be going for the next step with you. The other thing, if you go to the patient, well, unfortunately you're dying tomorrow or you're dying next week or something. No, don't do that. That's not the way to do it. The half of the treatment for palliative cases is actually how you personally connect with the family and the patient. Uh, for example, if you have a patient dying and you need to deliver the good bad news and you, need, you don't have anything to deliver, usually what I do, this is how they train you, and you will deliver your own style. You'll say, you know what, uh, it's, 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 this, it's, it's the, the x-ray and the images show that the disease is not responding. Unfortunately, there is no much of uh, new options now. Maybe there is more study coming, but right now, no. He will ask you right away, how long do you have, Dr. Dufan? How long I have? So the answer is simple. The answer, you can tell him, well, two months, three months, because the study showed that, and that's not wrong. Or you can deliver it in a nice way. You can tell him, well, unfortunately, I don't have a crystal ball to tell you that you'll be dying tomorrow or the next month. Only God had that. But what I can tell you, your time with us is limited. That's it. And he will understand it is limited, which is true. I don't know. I have uh, many experience that I say to people, you will die within six months. And after two months, I remember in the Walmart in the US, he was shopping beside me. So uh, I stopped doing that.